Okay, so I'm going to try and update the ghost here because they've released the uh, 1007 in beta and although I've got 1005 on the 1006 had a problem with the um, not recovering from a fail safe after a long period that I thought. Slightly complicated by the fact that they don't do a Mac OS version of the update as so I'm having to run this in a, a virtualized session. Before I got going I installed the drivers for Windows and obviously this is the, uh, the the ghost updater click and run. Now when I first tried doing this I, I figured I'd just plug the USB into the unit without it being plugged in the radio and that would be fine but that doesn't get any power so you actually have to have this plugged into the radio. Let's turn it on. Welcome to OpenTX. That's the ghost starting up there. We are currently on 1005. So going back up to here, now I've plugged it in, it's uh, it's detected that. And to install a beta, because 107 is in beta, what you had to do is click on beta. And then hopefully, let's hope this works, we say start update. So it's gone into bootloader mode there. It's flashing the firmware. Looks not too bad a speed. That little bar's crawling along a touch. I'm always nervous about doing this on a virtual machine because if the USB device has to reboot, then there can be a problem about it connecting to the host operating system or the guest operating system. But let's see how this goes. Hopefully, it's fine. Chugging along there. You can get into the bootloader mode as well by holding down the ghost button as you power on. That will go straight into there, but looks like it puts it in the, the bootloader mode anyway, which is good. Okay, now it's flashing the RX firmware, which it's going to presumably do a over the air update for my receiver. Nothing much happening on the screen of the ghost module itself. So it's update is complete. Ghost is rebooted. So let's just have a quick look here. Yeah, one zero zero seven. Oh, that was fairly painless. I'd still prefer a native Mac OS version though. So I guess next we find out how we update the receiver. I'm presuming I just power it on and it happily does it. But let's find out. Okay, it's been a few days since I filmed the first bit and mostly because um, I'd actually had this ready to send back but I've now got this, so hooray, but I haven't had to wire this back in again. Since that time, 1008 has come out and I think it's going to be quite rapid, the amount of development going on. So I was going to plug this in and see what happens. I've read the release notes and it says you will need to rebind it for now, uh, assuming that they do different things, but it says you won't need to ever press a button, you can just put it in bind here. So. First thing I'm going to do is actually power this on and uh, see what happens. I've actually no idea. It doesn't seem to be documented uh, at all about what should happen as this goes on. So, I mean, according to this, that has bound. I was kind of expecting it to uh, say, hey, do you want your firmware updated or something? Uh, so that is still bound and still going there as expected so what do I do now so my RX is 1005 my TX is 1007 how do I upgrade it it's an interesting question if I rebind it will it do it let's find out start bind. Lost. binding and pro so what I want to do is just power it on and it should come up in bind mode let's try that Oh, there we go. Bind success, RX firmware update required. Telemetry lost. Telemetry's lost. It's doing a update. You can see a rapidly flashing. Well, you probably can't see the rapidly flashing light. It is rapidly flashing. And it is doing a firmware update in the meantime. Verifying. It 
So it seems to be that you need to do a rebind um, in order for it to say, hey, let's update this. Although I don't know if it's going to continue like that. Press to continue. And the RX still says it's on 1005. Telemetry recovered. Ah, then it rebooted and it's on 1007. And looking at the servo here. Yeah, that's that's all back to normal. I can now test this out again. Um, although I might update it to 1008 just for the hell of it uh, to be on the latest and uh, start again. But the actual uh, process of doing all this seems fairly straightforward. It's quite similar if you've ever used Crossfire. Um, it'd be nice, as I said, to have a, a native Mac version that I could use this on so I didn't have to um, always rely on a Windows uh, VM. But there you go. That's the update and uh, I'll get on with my testing now. Hope that was helpful and I'll catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.